Hi, this is Bob Kilner again with the seventh video in my YouTube video series, which is going to discuss how to read a material safety data sheet or MSDS sheet. So first thing we need to know is what an MSDS sheet is. All chemicals are required to have an MSDS sheet made up for them. An MSDS sheet contains various properties of the substance, including physical data and safety information. Now, one of the big things in Ohio, where I'm from, is what, what is known as Jared's Law. Jared's Law is um, named after a kid named Jared who was tragically killed in, a, um, in an accident in their cafeteria where a cafeteria table that folds up fell on him and killed him. Now, all of a sudden, um, they passed several different measures, and Jared's Law, the actual booklet for it, is probably about 10 pages thick of different requirements. We're not allowed to have any liquids in our classroom anymore unless they have an MSDS sheet. So a lot of teachers that used hand sanitizer and even soap, things like that, we have to have MSDS sheets for them now, explaining their, their hazards and uh, reactivity and things like that. So why are the MSDS sheets useful? They're mainly used in the occupational settings only. They're not really used in personal settings, but MSDS sheets provide valuable data for safe use and potential hazards that could come about from using the given chemical. But because different companies provide different chemicals, different MSDS sheets can be made up for different variations of the same substance. So two soaps that are almost identical, one being the name brand product, one being a generic product, we could have completely different MSDS sheets based on how they were produced and just one little difference in them could change the reactivity of the entire chemical. So what data do MSDS sheets contain? All countries and, supplier, and suppliers have different forms of MSDS sheet, so we'll concentrate on the US version in this PowerPoint. The form itself contains data on boiling point, melting point, specific gravity, solubility, appearance, odor, reactivity, flammability, and how to handle these among others. So this is an example of a uh, the physical and chemical characteristics section, section 3 of an MSDS sheet, and section 4, which is fire exposure hazard data. Now if you look, you can see they talk about boiling point, vapor pressure, vapor density, solubility, appearance and odor, specific gravity, melt melting point, evaporation rate, ignition temperature, which is flammability temperature, and auto ignition temperature. The fire and explosion hazard data tell us the flash point, the flammability limits, how do we extinguish it, which is very important if it catches on fire because different things are going to obviously have to be put out differently, special firefighting procedures, and unusual fire and explosion hazards. Now these are all extremely important because obviously different chemicals react different ways. If we're using phosphorus in the lab, phosphorus itself has an ability to explode in air, so you know different, different chemicals are going to react obviously different ways and with the different variations of mixtures that we could have out there, there's just multiple MSDS sheets out there for whatever we want to use. So, additionally, chemicals also have an MSDS label on which four important factors are shown. Flammability, health, reactivity, and protective equipment needed. Now, that on the first three, the numbers used range from zero to four, with a zero being a minimal hazard and four being a severe hazard. So here's an example of one type of label. As you can see, this, this chemical is, has a minimal hazard risk in all four categories to us. Now, the zero on the protective equipment means that no protective equipment is required. There's also letters used, and on the next example I'm going to show you, I'll explain what that means. But in this case, the health, flammability, and reactivity ratings are all zero, meaning no potential hazard or limited potential hazard. Now, here's another one, and as you can see, we have the original one um, represented on the right. Now, on the left, this is an, uh, uh, just a straight up and down, uh, vertically written one that shows us the health, flammability, reactivity, and protective equipment ratings. Now, health, flammability, and reactivity here are given ratings of 1, which means they, they pose a, a slight risk, but not nothing overly dangerous. Protective equipment is given a G rating. G means gloves, okay? Gloves and goggles, both, okay? Now, uh, that being said, you should always wear goggles anyway, but um, wearing gloves can hurt you, even on chemicals that pose no risk. 